welcome to Little Learners. In today's video, I'm going to be going over the different areas of development in the early years foundation stage. This has been a requested video. I have kind of gone over this a little bit in one of my previous videos called How Are Children Assessed in Reception? So if you want to take a look at that after this video, I will link it in the description box below. In order to tell you all about the different areas of development, I'm going to be using these cards. These I made myself and are for sale on my TES shop if you would like to have a look at those. You can print them and do with them what you wish. Okay, so there are seven areas of development in the EYFS. These are three prime areas and four specific areas. The idea behind this is that without the three prime areas, without skills in those areas, children are unable to access the specific areas. So the three prime areas are personal, social and emotional development, communication and language, and physical development. So without these three, children are unable to access the specific areas, which are literacy, mathematics, understanding the world, and expressive arts and design. So let's go into a little bit more detail about each of these areas. Many parents are familiar with the national curriculum and the way that that works and what children are assessed on because that starts from year one and carries on throughout a child's learning journey. But the early years foundation stage framework is very different in the sense that the areas that are assessed and are learnt are different to the national curriculum. Of course, the EYFS contains all of the knowledge and learning that children need to prepare them for the national curriculum. Of course, we learn to read and write and we do science activities and maths, but we also do things to help children to develop their personal skills, their personal and emotional skills, their physical development, and their imagination. So it really is a wonderful place to be. So let's start with those prime areas. We have personal, social and emotional development. This is split into three different things. Making relationships, self-confidence and self-awareness, and managing feelings and behaviour. Making relationships is kind of what it says on the tin. So are children able to play with other children? Are they able to share? Are they able to respond to what other children are saying to keep their play going? Do they take steps to resolve conflicts with other children in their play? With self-confidence and self-awareness, children are able to start choosing what activities they want to do by themselves, maybe with help at first, and then they can start choosing activities themselves. They can ask for help when they need it or say that they don't need help, and they're confident to speak in a familiar group. Of course, with all of the areas of development, there are descriptors that teachers go by from zero months to 60 months. So when children come into reception, we mainly look at 30 to 50 months and 40 to 60 months. And within these age bands, we kind of have an idea of what children should be able to do as they get a little bit older each month. Children won't always be working within their own age band and that is okay. I've explained a little bit more about that in my other video that I've linked in the description. So it's important to remember that the reception year really is a journey. So children may be able to do some things with help at the beginning of reception and then be able to do them independently by the end of reception. When we talk about managing feelings and behaviour, we're thinking about whether or not children can talk about their feelings. Do they understand the feelings of others? If they are angry or upset, can they verbalise that? Can they control those emotions or do they have a tantrum and have a lack of control with their emotions? Can a child adjust their behaviour to adapt to different situations? Now, of course, I just want to remind you that when children come to reception, it is not expected that they can do all of these things. These are just things that we work on throughout reception. So communication and language is split up into listening and attention, speaking and understanding. Listening and attention, things like can a child maintain activity for a long period of time? Does a child have two channeled attention? So can they be doing something and listening or talking at the same time while they're, while they're doing it? So can they be drawing a picture and talking to you at the same time? 
Can children listen to stories and anticipate what's going to happen next? Do they ask questions about what they've just heard? Can they answer questions about what they've just heard? Understanding kind of follows on from listening and attention, because if you don't listen and attend, then you can't understand what's happening. So when a child hears an instruction, can you please go over there and bring me a blue pencil? Do they understand what they need to do? Do they understand an instruction with more than one part? Can they go over there, pick up the blue pencil, come back and give it to you? Or do they walk over there and then aren't sure what they need to do next? Are they able to follow a story without pictures and props? Can they understand what's happening in a story that you're telling them, even though there are no pictures or props to follow? Can children answer how and why questions about something that they've seen or heard? With speaking, we're looking at children's vocabulary. So do they start to expand their vocabulary around new things that they've learnt, new topics that we've discussed? Do they use language to explore their own imagination? Do they use different language and appropriate language in role play? So if a child is pretending to be working in a cafe, are they using phrases like, what would you like to eat? That will be 10 pounds, please. Here's your coffee. Does a child introduce narrative into their play? Can they give their role play kind of a story that they're playing out? Then we move on to physical development. This is separated into moving and handling and health and self-care. Now you may have heard me in previous videos talk about fine and gross motor skills. This is where those come in. So with moving and handling, we are looking at gross motor skills. So on a larger scale, can children walk, run? Do they climb? Can they navigate around different spaces and different obstacles safely? And then fine motor skills, which are on a much smaller scale. So can they hold a pencil correctly? Can they use scissors? Do they have strength in their hands to be able to use a pegboard or elastic bands. With health and self-care, we're looking to see if children can use the toilet by themselves, which they need to be able to do by the time they get to reception, by the way. Can they tell adults when they're hungry or when they want to have a rest? Can they dress by themselves? Can they do their own buttons or shoelaces? Do they think about safety? Do they keep safety in mind when they're navigating around a space? So as I said before, without skills in the prime areas, children are unable to access the specific areas. So without skills in personal, social and emotional development, children are unable to tackle skills in literacy, maths, understanding the world and expressive arts and design. For example, if a child is doing a group task and they are unable to express themselves or they are unable to manage their own emotions, maybe they want the pink pencil but someone else has the pink pencil, if they're unable to manage their own emotions, then that activity is not going to go well. Without communication and language, children are unable to access the rest of their learning. If they can't listen, understand, and then speak, they are unable to access the rest of the curriculum. So if they don't understand a task, they won't be able to do it. If they don't listen and attend, they won't be able to understand what they're supposed to do. And if they can't speak and verbalise what they want to do, then they won't be able to ask for their own choice. They won't be able to tell a teacher what, what they're finding tricky. It will be very difficult for them. And lastly, with physical development, if a child doesn't have fine motor skills, they won't be able to write or use a paintbrush. And if they don't have health and self-care skills, then they're probably going to end up hurting themselves or getting poorly by not washing their hands or not having good hygiene. So these prime areas are essential before any other learning can happen. So moving on to those specific areas. First we have literacy. This is separated into reading and writing. So for this obviously we need our listening and attention skills, we need our understanding skills and also those fine motor skills for writing. For mathematics we have number and shape space and measure. So number obviously numerals and everything to do with numbers and shape space and measure is more to do with our obviously shapes, measure to do with measuring with a ruler or measuring time or being able to sequence events in a particular order 
So being able to say that I get up, then I brush my teeth, then I go to school, etc, etc, in the right order. Understanding the world is separated into people and communities, technology and the world. So people and communities taking an interest in their own environment and the people around them. Do they enjoy taking part in family traditions, birthday parties? Do they show an interest in the people who are familiar to them? And do they show interest into different occupations in life, like a police officer or a doctor? With the world, we're looking at a bit of a wider picture, but can they talk about things that they've observed in their own environment, plants or animals that they've seen? Do they show care for these living things in their environment? Can they notice differences, similarities or patterns of change? With technology, this is not just computers. This is to do with using buttons and switches. Does a child know what a fridge is for or what an oven is for? Can a child use a remote control to turn something on? Does a child understand the different uses of different technology and can they use some of them? Expressive arts and design is separated into exploring and using media and materials and being imaginative. So using different media and materials, we're looking at painting and colouring and Play-Doh. Does a child like to experiment with mixing colours or using different instruments to make different sounds? With being imaginative, of course we have things like being able to create representations of different people, places and things by painting or drawing them, but also by role-playing them. Can a child create their own narrative within their play? Can a child use different props appropriately to support their play and their role-play? So I hope that's given you a bit more of an idea of what each of the different areas of development are in the EYFS and what they're for. If you have any questions, please do leave them in the comments below. Don't forget, if you want to keep track of all of the different areas and you don't want to keep Googling them every time, you can buy a pack with everything you need to know from my TDS shop, the link for which is in the description box below. Please give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful as it really helps out my channel. If you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you never miss a video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.